What up, everybody? Power Book 2 Go Season 4 Episode 3 has secrets that were carried over from Season 3 being exposed, with Noma finding out about Tariq getting the green cards for Obi, and Monet, Kane, and Tariq finding out about what Diana did, dressing up as Monet, and delivering Tasha's address to Kay Egan. And we know that this episode started from the very next day after episode two because Kane spent the night with Effie to celebrate getting the deal done with the Russians. And Obi was still being interrogated by Detective Carter. But the episode starts out with Tariq and Brayden both selling their cars in order to come up with the money to get back in the game. Pinky hooked them up with the buyers who also docked 10% for dits and scratches without even checking. So not only is Tariq back walking again, but Brayden is also. And Brayden is back on making sure that him and Tariq are actually in a partnership and doesn't want any secrets between them. This is going back to the words that were spoken to Brayden in seasons one and two by Riley and Kane. Riley talking about Tariq always keeping secrets and Kane telling Brayden that Tariq treats him like his number two. This is a parallel to Ghost and Tommy and people always seeing Ghost as the boss and Tommy always feeling like he was living in Ghost's shadow and that nobody respected him apart from Ghost, partly because they didn't, other than the fact they knew he was crazy. But when Tariq went to meet up with Pinky and Monet, he had to tell them his car broke down because the fact he can't have Monet knowing he's getting back in the game. And if he said he sold his car, that would be red flags that he was up to something. Pinky wasn't initially able to get anything because the fact that Kate had moved and her house was cleaned out. So Kate has officially moved to Chicago, which is interesting because the fact that Force is canceled and Ghost Timeline is also ahead of Force's. Tariq then went to meet up with Davis to see if he knew a plug from all his years as a defense attorney. And Davis knew a plug named Zion, but let Tariq know that he's taking 20%. Because Davis is losing all his clients now that he's suspended. And we also learn later in the episode that his wife Marilyn has filed for divorce. And has taken half of everything he has. So Davis needs the money right now just as bad as Tariq and Brayden. While Tariq was meeting up with Davis to get back in the game. Monet was meeting up with her kids because Noma sent her a text and let her know that she wasn't needed at work. And Monet didn't appreciate that. And has begun to build up resentment against Noma. And to make things worse in the middle of Monet complaining about Noma. Drew and Kane each received a text from Noma. Because the fact that Obi had not been answering her calls. Kane was assigned to take care of Obi's responsibilities. And Drew to check in at Obi's apartment. And as Obi was being interrogated by Carter. Carter mentioned that Congressman Tate expedited Obi's brother's green cards. Notice he didn't call him Councilman Tate. So enough time has passed since when he got elected that Tate is officially now a congressman. Leaving the question, will we see Tate in season four? Because his brother Kamal is now also working with Carter. He forced their way into the task force, similar to how he got to work with Whitman's investigation into Tariq in season two. He said he wanted to finish what he started. The woman detective called Tate a dumb. But Whitman felt the same way about Tate in season two. But at the end of the day, it was Tate who did the most to almost bring Tariq down. But something Tate also mentioned was how Carter doesn't respect jurisdictional boundaries. Carter also violated Obi's right to due process. Carter not going by the book could come into play down the line. While being questioned by Carter... Carter tricked Obi, saying he had photos of Obi with Tariq, but he was lying. And Obi didn't even look at the pictures to see, playing right into Carter's hands, and then he asked to make the phone call. Obi then calls his brother, where Drew is waiting. Obi's brother has no idea what Obi actually did for a living. And when Drew was leaving, Obi's brother mentioned their company getting him his green cards. Then we got our introduction to the new plug Zion and after just one scene Zion is already my second favorite character on the show after Tariq. The meeting went down at 4th Circle. This is the name of Zion's underground fight club that he grew up fighting in and now owns. 
Davis knows Zion because he helped him beat a Rico case back in the days. And unknown to Tariq until the end of the meeting, the only reason Zion took the meeting with Tariq in the first place was because of his last name. I didn't get a location of the fight club. If I missed it, let me know in the comments. But the undefeated champ who was in the ring at the time was from Queens. Again, where the whole story originated at with Raisin and Kanan and where Ghost and Tommy grew up. Zion comes down from the upper room with two females, putting his shirt back on when Tariq and Brayden first see him. Zion let them know that they only had enough of 12 bricks and his minimum was 15. And even if he did want to cut him a break, his product was all accounted for. Zion then mentioned that he thought Tariq would know better than to come up short to him given who his father was. Tariq replied respectfully, you don't know who my father was. And Zion replied, I know he knew how to solve a problem before it became a problem. Then shoved Tariq in the chest. Zion then said he found it funny Tariq went and got a white boy just like Ghost did. And Zion calling James Ghost is big. Because again, not many knew James's alias as Ghost. That was the mystery about him. And Zion then asked Brayden if he was as crazy as Tommy. And this episode was definitely a major shift in that direction for Brayden because we saw him go skiing like Tommy likes to do. And when Tommy really gets crazy, that's when he's all coked up. Brayden let L convince him to do some powder because he was having a bad day. Like, come on, B, for real, smoke a blunt, have a drink. You really gonna let this girl convince you to start doing coke? But Brayden also got the idea on how they're gonna start moving product by setting up gigs for L's group and selling product from the merch tables. And Brayden's sister Becca was also all coked up this episode because she had to move out her dorm room and the sorority she wanted to join rejected her. So now Brayden and Becca can start getting all coked up together just like Tommy and Kate used to. But as Zion was asking Brayden if he is as crazy as Tommy, they were interrupted by one of Zion's distros named Roman. And Roman left behind some samples for Tariq to take, and Tariq pocketed them, then told Effie that somebody was selling that product at Stansfield. This set in motion, Effie taking the samples to Noma, and Kay knowing that the product was coming from Roman. And Noma demanded that Roman be taken off the board, and Kay did this by lighting Roman's re-up on fire. But Carter and Tate got the license plate from the van and tracked down Roman and brought him in for questioning. This is also something that could come into play down the line. And just like in Season 3, when Kane took care of International Guap, knowing it was actually Lorenzo who killed Zeke, Kane knew that Roman wasn't the one moving product at Stansfield. And he went to talk to Effie about who told her Roman was moving product at Stansfield. And when she wouldn't tell him, he figured out it was Tariq. And at this point, like Effie did with Diana in Episode 2, when Diana saw her talking to Tariq, Effie deflected the situation and said something about Kane f***ing Noma. And either though Kane hadn't hooked up with Noma yet, he would. Because after him and Effie got into it, he went straight to Noma, knowing he didn't have a future with Effie with her plan on moving to Stanford. But at the same time, I'm not sure if Kane realized that Tariq played Effie because he was asking her about Tariq and her playing the long game. And she never cleared things up with Kane, letting him know that Tariq played her. So we'll see if Effie lets Tariq slide with playing her like that. Most likely she will because in season one, she let him slide for walking off with her product, knowing it was payback for getting him expelled at show. But this might also tip Effie off that Tariq is back in the game. Tariq got back in the game with 15 bricks for 300k. So they're getting their weight for 20 per brick from Zion which is a real good deal. But Davis had to front Tariq the 50K he was missing so he could get in. And Davis said, let's go get these bricks, something he said he thought he would never say again, confirming that Davis was in the game before he became a lawyer. But prior to this happening, Noman didn't let Obi slide when she found out about the green cards from Drew. When Drew picked up Obi at the precinct, Obi was telling Drew that it would be better for both of them that they not let Noma know about this. But Drew is just setting Obi up. Because Drew was also trying to become Noma's number two like Kane. 
and told Diana that he doesn't want to work for Kane and he's better for Kane and Lorenzo knew it. But now that Kane is smashing Noma and securing his future, that number two spot is definitely taking. Kane is even trying to move up to partner because he told Noma they make a good team. But something very interesting that Noma said before she killed Obi was that they have use for Tariq because he's so brilliant. So is this foreshadowing that Noma will link back up with Tariq at some point? Because we do already know that Tariq's going to hook up with Anya from the promo videos. Speaking of Anya, she made a brief appearance in the episode as Noma's meeting up with Kane and Effie. And Anya straight up asked Noma who they were. Keep it in mind that it was originally Effie's idea to target Anya in the first place. And she got to be keeping this in her back pocket as her way to get to Stanford. And we got another flashback scene this episode with young Monet, Drew, and Diana from around 2005 with Cassidy, I'm a Hustler, playing in the background. And Monet taught Drew and Diana how to bag product and lie. This is a parallel to how Tasha taught Tariq how to lie when he had to go to counseling after bringing a gun to school. And Tariq would always tell Tasha whenever he had to lie or hide something, quote, like you taught me. Both Diana and Tariq were asked to hide the truth about their families because their families weren't like everybody else. Monet learned how to read when Diana was lying when she was young because Diana crosses her fingers. And when present day Monet asked Diana if she knew Kate Egan, Diana lied to Monet and she said she didn't and Tariq never mentioned her. Get me to the Tejada family dinner. It's like every time this family sits down together, something's going to go down. First with the whole Zeke thing. Then when they went to play cards and Monet had Lorenzo killed. Now as they're sitting down for dinner, Tariq gets the message from Pinky with Kate's ring door cam footage that we knew was going to come back into play. Monet let Kane see the message, and Drew got Diana out of there, exposing that he was in on it. But I think most of us knew this was coming. The thing that caught my attention was before this, Monet was telling her kids that she was starting her own business, meaning she's getting back into the game. And ironically, the only child who agreed to help her was Diana. But the big question is, who is Monet's new supplier? Because it's obviously not Noma. So I think that my boy Zion is going to be revealed as Monet's new plug as well. And there you have it. Leave your thoughts, theories, and predictions in the comments.